Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Keystone 3 that I received from Keystone. I received it about three months ago, been testing it ever since, making sure that everything's good to go. And today I decided to put this video together to share that information. I had been using the Keystone Pro for uh, about a year and it served me very well. And when the Keystone 3 came out, and Keystone offered to send me one with one of my custom NFTs on the back. Now keep in mind that the Keystone Pro is still supported by Keystone. They will keep uh, supporting it as far as minor fixes, minor bugs. But of course their main focus is on the Keystone 3. As you can tell just size wise, the Keystone 3 is smaller, it is lighter, and the battery is designed to last 10 times longer than the Keystone Pro. Also has a much brighter screen, high resolution screen, as compared to the Keystone Pro. And I found that the Keystone Pro one was pretty good, specifically for my uses. Now, as far as the setup for the Keystone 3, Keystone does an excellent job on their website, walking you through the whole installation I found that you don't need to be a techie, you don't need to be tech savvy in order to go ahead and set up your Keystone 3. All that you have to do is follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the Keystone website. That being said, a little bit later on in the video, I will go ahead and do a quick overview of the setup process and me setting up the Keystone 3. So if you are interested in that and solely that, you can skip ahead. But if you want to hear more about my thoughts on uh, cold wallets in general and why I gravitated to Keystone, then stay right where you're at. Now, I've been testing cold wallets or hardware wallets over the past three years, a little bit over three years, and more so for my own benefit in learning so I don't have to trust, more so I would know the information. And of course, to be able to create content for my channel so that I can share it with people just like you. So some of the issues that I had with other hardware wallets, I've had manufacturers decide to not support Aiden token or coin that I was utilizing and they had stated that they were fully supporting and for a while they did support it, but then they decided not to. And I quickly learned that, hey, I have my seed phrase, my 24 words, I could pick up another wallet, install that seed phrase into that wallet and I'll be good to go, right? No, nope. well, that didn't happen in my case because there were a couple different options. One, the certain token that I was utilizing with that specific wallet was only offered at the time on that specific hardware wallet. Once I did find a wallet that handled that token, the derivation path was off. The derivation path is information that the wallet needs in order to import that specific token or coin correctly. And just think about it, as far as that specific token, those coins are still somewhere on the blockchain that I am unable to get to and receive or import into a, another wallet such as the Keystone. But I still have hopes and technology keeps evolving every day and hopefully I will be able to retrieve those tokens. Another issue that I had with another wallet and a very popular wallet was the fact that it updates through their software as far as the firmware. And during one of these updates that I was prompted to update the firmware, I went ahead, updated the firmware, and it downloaded a version that even the manufacturer doesn't know how that version got there. And I know it wasn't hacked or anything like that, but something went awry, and now I was unable to utilize that wallet. And just think if you need something to make a quick trade or you need funds in an emergency, now I have to go out and buy another wallet, import that seed phrase in order to perform that transaction. But unfortunately, by the time I got all of that done and went to process the transaction, the price of that coin had dramatically dropped and I ended up losing money. All because the only option that I had to do this update or firmware update was via the manufacturer's software, as opposed to the Keystone that would allow me to go to Keystone's website, check out all the specs, know that it's coming from a trusted source, download that onto an SD card, and then go ahead and update my firmware that way. Another issue that I had with other wallets is that they require blind signing. A lot of these other wallets have very limited screen space, so as you're going ahead and tapping away trying to perform this transaction, you need to enable blind signing on these wallets, 
which now basically you're getting commands as you're trying to confirm a transaction of commands not being recognized. So basically you just have to go ahead and trust what you're seeing on the screen and okay it for the transaction to go through. Well, once again, if something were to go wrong with that transaction as far as it being compromised, now I am okaying and accepting that transaction and I'm thinking it's going to the wallet that I was intending to send it to and unfortunately it ended up in some other hacker's wallet. Another issue with a hardware wallet manufacturer was the fact that they were working great for a year and a half and then decided to abandon the whole project. Now here I was, spent my money, invested my money and time into their hardware wallet and they decided that they had enough or the project wasn't worth it. So now I had a lumpy, expensive paperweight and had to go out and buy another wallet and hope that everything worked with the seed phrase in order to be able to have access to my funds. So the one thing that I want you to also keep in mind is that not all hardware wallets are compatible, meaning that certain wallets may support certain coins that other hardware wallets do not. And now if you get caught in a pinch like I did several times and you just think, hey, it's okay, I have my 24 word seed phrase, I'll just import that into the other wallet. Well, you technically don't lose your tokens if you have your seed phrase or your coins or your NFTs. But if you can't find a compatible wallet that supports those tokens or those assets in general, then you're going to be stuck like I was several times. So all of those things that I speak about from derivation path and having the flexibility to change derivation paths, at least the most popular ones, the Keystone 3 allows you to do that. Okay, so now that I shared that information with you on bad experiences that I had with hardware wallets, let me tell you why I'm a big fan of this Keystone and why it is different than even today's existing competitors out there and you get much more bang for your buck and more importantly to me, that peace of mind that you are safe. First off, the Keystone Pro is fully ear-gapped. What it means is you do not need a physical connection to your device or your computer in order to utilize the Keystone Pro. What the Keystone Pro does is provide QR codes that you scan in order to read addresses and then you scan again in order to confirm those transactions. That way you never need to connect to your device with a USB cable or Bluetooth, which of course, anytime you connect, there is a chance that there might be some malicious code happening in there somehow, and uh, you'll have issues like the ones that I previously explained. Now there's been reports even recently that hackers are using USB cables, and they're going ahead and uh, inserting malicious code into USB cables, and now you think you're good to go and just hooking up your USB cable to your hard wallet and you end up getting drained. And it's unfortunate, but all you gotta do is do a Google search and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Same would occur with Bluetooth. Once again, you are connecting, making a connection that I don't deem necessary when you have options like the Keystone 3. I do want you to keep in mind that with the Keystone 3, Keystone allows you to connect the included USB-C cable in order to update your firmware. Once again, just because people were asking for it, they were saying that in order to use an SD card was a bit more complicated and they just found it easier to be able to utilize a USB cable in order to update the firmware on the device. So you do have that option. I don't recommend that option for obvious reasons that I just conveyed to you, but the option is there if you need it. For me, being able to take a micro SD card, go ahead and just download the firmware right from Keystone site. Super easy, nice and quick. Go ahead and put it into the SD card port and update your firmware that way. Keystone also thought about implementing a Bluetooth option into the Keystone 3, but they decided against it. And for me, I think that's a good thing. The Keystone 3 works with a bunch of different software wallets. The two main ones that I utilize, I'm a big fan of the Solana blockchain, so I use Soulflare, and I also use MetaMask. They're both super simple to use. I've done hundreds of transactions already utilizing the Keystone 3. If you're a MetaMask user, this is the only 
hardware wallet at the time that works with MetaMask on a mobile device. The Keystone 3 is also built on open source software. So what that means to me and you is that the code is out there, it's public, anybody can go ahead and check it. So that basically takes away the ability of any backdoors that manufacturers can put in to their firmware and eventually into these hardware wallets where they can get access to it or other legal entities or governments with certain threats can get access to it. With the Keystone 3, we do not need to worry about that. Now, most hardware wallets have one secure element chip in their wallet. Keystone Pro has three, protecting your seed phrase. The Keystone 3 also has PCI level anti-tampering. So if anything physical gets done to this device, trying to open it, trying to pry it apart, all of the information on this device will be wiped out and the device rendered useless. The Keystone 3 also accepts up to three seed phrases. So that's pretty cool. So like I had told you, I am using the Keystone Pro as my Bitcoin only wallet and using the Keystone 3 for all of my other assets, including NFTs. But now if I want to, I can go ahead and take the seed phrase that's specific to my Bitcoin and import that into this wallet, theoretically having two wallets in one. And you can have up to three of those seed phrases, alleviating the need of you having to have three separate wallets to carry around with or worry about or spend money on. The Keystone 3 offers a four inch, good looking, sleek, high resolution LCD display, making it much easier to read and see and confirm your transactions than other hardware wallets that are available on the market today. Another thing that really sets the Keystone 3 apart from other hardware wallets is that you're able to use the fingerprint scanner or fingerprint reader in order to read your fingerprints to gain access to the functions in your wallet as well as confirm transactions, saving you time and of course upping the security measures. You can also just strictly use a password if uh, that is more convenient for you. And the other thing that I want to talk about that a lot of people uh, under, under, uh, undervalue is customer service. Other hardware wallets, when I was having these issues in the past, I would send an email or use their customer support portals. And I would wait weeks sometimes just to get a reply. And the reply would be very vague. And I would go ahead and reply back a whole full novel again and then end up having to wait weeks to get a reply on that. And it was just game, this game that they play where when it comes to Keystone, when I send them an email, I get a reply. It might take a day. So I think the most that I ever took was a day and a half, but they reply in, to reply in detail and really care about solving your problem. I mean, that's a big deal. We're talking about assets here. We're talking about funds, uh, people's life savings. So this isn't a joke. This isn't just some fashion item that you could live without. Uh, this is uh, you being your own bank. And now if you can't get support from the manufacturer and now you're rendered useless, you're going to be caught in certain cases like I was in the past that I never want to be in that predicament again. And that's why I'm here sharing this information about Keystone with you. The battery on the Keystone 3 as opposed to the Keystone uh, Pro is not removable. So it is built in, but there is a USB-C port, as I explained earlier, uh, with an option for updating your firmware, which once again, I do not recommend, but you also utilize it for charging purposes. But I want you to keep in mind, if you are using a, your mobile device or your computer to charge your Keystone 3, then you're also opening up those vulnerabilities and those issues that I spoke about earlier. So be sure to charge them be sure to charge your Keystone Pro with a battery bank at the worst case scenario, or even better, plug it right into an electrical outlet and uh, that way you'll be much safer. And be sure to utilize the USB-C cable that came with the Keystone Pro. The Keystone 3 consists of a power button, a USB port that we mentioned before for charging purposes or also firmware, and then there is a slot for the micro SD card 
which is the way that I recommend updating the firmware. Uh, just keep in mind, there's not that many updates that you need to do on firmware per year, so it's really not an inconvenience. A couple minutes and you're done, and the safety, once again, goes a long way. Now, before I get into my quick setup process or part of this video, I want to talk about seed phrases and super, super important. If you lose that 24 word seed phrase or even 12 word, but opt for the 24 word seed phrase when you are configuring your hardware wallet for the first time, you need to back up that seed phrase. If you lose those 24 words and even the order of those 24 words, you, you're done. You pretty much are not going to be able to gain access to your assets, whether they're coins, tokens, NFTs consider them gone. So not only do I recommend writing down those seed phrases and keeping that in a very safe place, but also go ahead and utilize one of these seed phrase backups that are made of metal that once again, all help in floods and in fires, keeping your seed phrase safe. And uh, from there, store it in a safe location you won't have to worry if there are these metal objects about rain, about moldew, about moisture, about humidity, or even fire, because that's what these little pieces of metal are designed to prevent against. Uh, Keystone also sells their own version, so be sure to look into that. I will put links in the video description as well as in the comments field. Utilizing my affiliate code, you'll also get a discount, and of course, you'll help support this channel. So if you can, purchase from there, and I could keep doing what I'm doing, and be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all the good stuff that you're used to. Another little quick piece of advice is to make sure that when you do buy your hardware wallet, my recommendation to get it from the Keystone website, because you know that it's coming from a legit source, not tampered with if they go to one of the other big box stores or retailers or online retailers you have no idea how many hands that passed through before it got to you so my advice is get it directly from keystone and as i stated earlier i'll put a link in the description for you to be able to access that and know that you are getting it from a credible site as opposed to possibly getting one that's been tampered with don't take a picture of your seed phrase don't store it online you're just going to open yourself up to vulnerabilities that you're doing everything possible by getting your keystone and listening to the words that I'm saying and many other people out there are saying and keystone is saying. You're going to bypass all that if you end up taking a picture with your phone and it ends up in the cloud somewhere with your 24 words. Don't do that. Write it down. Burn that piece of paper after you import it into one of these metal fireproof and waterproof backups. Once your Keystone 3 is fully charged, you're gonna go ahead and hit the side button, power button, boot it up, and it's gonna ask you to choose your language. You'll go ahead and choose the language that you want. From there, you're going to visit the device verification page. You're gonna scan that QR code and follow the online instructions. It'll give you a verification code that you're gonna go ahead and type in. And from there, you should be good to go. And it'll say that your device is genuine and continue. So from there, you'll have a couple different options, as I stated, either utilizing the USB cable itself and updating it directly from the internet, or you can go ahead and update it via the card three. It'll update and you'll keep on going. Okay, from there, it's going to ask you if you have a new wallet or if you're going to import an older wallet that you have. For the purpose of this video, we'll go with a new wallet. From there, it'll ask you to create the wallet and it will give you the 24 words. And then you'll go through the steps that I already mentioned as far as copying it down into the included little uh, sheets that Keystone placed in this box for the Keystone 3. And then as soon as you possibly can, transfer what you wrote down on that paper onto one of these metal backups or even pick up the keystone tablet as you're making your purchase for the keystone 3 that way everything will arrive together and you're good to go and won't be in limbo during this process yeah, believe me it'll help you sleep better at night if you do it that way okay from there you'll confirm everything as far as your seed phrase and you're pretty much good to go from there you'll be able to utilize different software options 
as I mentioned to you, I utilize Soul Flare and MetaMask. And once again, just as simple as utilizing the QR code, it'll prompt you both in Firefox and in Soul Flare, and it'll walk you through the steps nice and easy to be able to just scan the QR codes uh, on both ends. And there is a full list of all the supported information that I just conveyed to you on Keystone's website. So bottom line, if you really want to secure your crypto assets, be able to sleep at night comfortably, nice and easy, simple, pretty much anybody could use. You don't need to be tech savvy, as I mentioned earlier. Definitely take a look at this Keystone 3 as a very viable option for your crypto wallet needs and don't forget back up your seed phrase on one of these metal tablets